So now that you've seen all these amazing APIs that you can build um, with from Kenji's talk, um, I want to provide you with some insights into some of the lessons that we've learned um, building with these APIs as customer zero. My name is Thomas Steiner. I work in Chrome Developer Relations, and um, I go by Tomiak on all of the socials. And um, yeah, with that, I want to start with my presentation. But before I start, like, who is actually customer zero? What, what is customer zero? Um, you can think of customer zero as the zeroth customer of a feature once it's implemented by engineering. Um, here at Google, customer zero typically is someone from developer relations, someone who is not involved with building the product, who is not biased, who is just there to provide feedback and be the very first customer of a product. So let me tell you how I, as Customer Zero, have approached getting from an idea to a prompt. And remember that in Chrome, we're working with Gemini Nano, which is a really comparably small LLM. So the zeroth step, of course, is always to come up with an app idea. And I'm, as a non-native speaker of English, I'm German, um, I often go to Google and search for synonyms. So I would typically search for something like um, synonyms for the, verb, uh, for the adjective uh, funny, as an example. Um, what if I could just ask an AI model for synonyms and do so locally so that I don't have to hit the network? And born is the idea of an amazing AI app, the Synonym, synonym Finder. In Chrome, we ship Gemini Nano, a comparably really small LLM, which means some prompt engineering might be required. And um, yeah, definitely do not expect um, the quality of much larger models like Gemini 1.5 Pro. Um, we have more background on LLM sizes in an article um, that we have published on uh, web.dev slash articles slash LLM sizes. But yeah, so as a reminder, Gemini Nano is really a small model. So now the actual very first step is to come up with a prompt. And for this task, you can use the Prompt API Playground. You can find it on chrome.dev. Um, the Prompt API Playground is linked there. And um, my first shot at a prompt is simply create a list of synonyms for the word happy. And of course, later on, I would make this dynamic, um, but for now, I just hard code happy as my adjective. And um, on the playground, there's a red reset button, and this button will be important in the future because it allows me to reset the session. We will see why this is useful in the next couple of slides. So when I run this against the model, um, it shows that it gives me actually a list of synonyms for the, for the adjective happy. But um, there's a little problem, and um, we've seen this before in one of the other presentations. Um, the model is trying to yeah, be helpful, and yeah, it makes it sound like friendly and helpful, and uh, yeah, just kind of human also. But in a concrete case, the opening um, phrase that it tells me here is not really useful. I actually just want the pure list of synonyms. So I need to um, yeah, prompt engineer my prompt a little bit, and um, in this case, I just append only respond with the list of synonyms and don't respond with text before or after the list. And when I run this now, you can see it is working. There is no more opening text. I just get a list of all the um, synonyms for a particular adjective. So prompt engineering has worked. But then playing a bit more with other adjectives, like in this case, amazing, there's another problem. And the problem here is it tells me twice Astonishing, astonishing. So there's duplicates. That's something that can happen with these kind of smaller models. So I need to, as a step three, harden the prompt against corner cases. So I could, of course, just filter this locally on the client, but I can also just try the prompt engineering approach further. So in this case, I just add each synonym may only occur once in the list, and then testing with a fresh session and that's why I, I mentioned the red reset button. So I get a fresh session each time that is not primed by the history so far. Um, I now get back three unique synonyms. So it seems like this has fixed it. And um, just as an aside, um, we've seen this in a presentation earlier this morning, why not JSON? So if I want structured data, why don't I just um, request JSON from the model? The Gemini Nano model is perfectly capable of giving me JSON, but JSON is not a streaming-friendly format. If I want to get a JSON response and make sense of it, I need to parse it. And I can only parse it once I have, once I have the entire message. So in this case, um, I could, of course, get the JSON list from the model, 
but um, I want maximum speed. I want to get my results as soon as possible. I don't want to wait for the entire JSON model, to, uh, JSON response to be there before I then can parse it and then make sense of it. And that's why, um, in this case, of course, it's over-engineered for this toy application, but you can see um, once you start to get into real applications, why this can make a difference. So with this prep work done, I'm ready for the first MVP, the minimum viable product implementation. So let's get cracking. In this, uh, yeah, just very simple form, I enter one word, press a button to get suggestions from the model, and then the input is pre-processed to be just one word, so no, no sentences, no anything. I just want to get one word and see the result. The synonyms then get listed in the app as an unordered list in an output element. And I'm, um, yeah, careful. This is HTML that we're putting onto the page, so we need, to, we need to sanitize it. In the worst case, the model could respond with a script tag, for example. So, of course, I don't want to, um, yeah, attack myself with the model, so I need to um, be sure that I sanitize this. We will get to this in a moment. In this application, I also have a little debug button so I can see what's going on. I can expand my details here and then I can see, can see the uh, raw prompt that we have um, yeah, from the previous slides, um, prompt engineered together, and then also the raw response. You may notice there's um, the first um, adjective is uh, indented by one space. That's also one of the yeah, just funny things that uh, Gemini Nano sometimes does. It sometimes responds with the space as the first um, character. So just, it's not a typo, it's not, uh, yeah. <laughs> but this is really the raw, raw response as it came out of the model. So now, step four, start implementing. First, I of course need to make the uh, prompt um, yeah, function dynamic. So you can see that's a very simple um, function here. I give it a word and then I insert it in my prompt engineered um, yeah, prompt. That's easy. I then obtain the uh, word from the input field and sanitize it. Um, I just want one word, so I can just essentially get the very first, um, like split it, sp split it by space and then get the first um, yeah, word. And um, then in my uh, get prompt function from the previous slide um, to get my prompt, I can then create a session, as you've seen before in Kenji's talk, um, that gives me yeah, the prompt streaming method here. And for this application, as I said, I want maximum performance. So I'm not getting the prompt function, where I have to wait until the entire result is there. I want the prompt streaming method so I can get the results streaming in as they become available from the model. Now I need to iterate over the stream. It returns the data in chunks as the model comes up with its response token by token. In the current implementation in Chrome, each chunk contains the up to now full response, so it's uh, just getting longer and longer. And that's something we want to change in the future, so for now that's a, um, yeah, just implementation detail. And whenever a new chunk becomes available, I split on new lines, remove the markdown, so it can be an asterisk or a dash because it's markdown formatting. And, um, and then as a baseline sanitiza sanitization step, I just throw away everything that is not an ASCII letter and um, yeah, then line breaks. And finally, I remove empty lines because sometimes um, after the sanitization step, I can end up with uh, just an empty line. I don't want that. All right, and after all this filtering, if there's items left, I just render them onto this page by, onto the page by setting the output elements in HTML. I can do that because I've sanitized the model's output, so by just accepting ASCII characters, I can be sure that there's no opening script tag or anything. So that's my baseline sanitization that allows me to use inner HTML. And um, as you can see in the video demo, can we roll the uh, video demo, please? I can enter a word, press suggest. The results come streaming in. I can then expand and see what is going on. Try a different word, lucky, hit suggest. The synonyms stream in, and you can see the um, debug output here gets updated in real time. And again, we see this uh, first response token is a space. Well, it's just Gemini Nano doing its thing. All right, back to the slides, please. Now we need to optimize the application because there's a performance problem. It doesn't really matter much with uh, small outputs like in this particular case, 
But I want to set you up for success if you build real applications. So in my synonym, uh, Finder app, that consists just of a couple of words. Um, but once you start getting outputs that are longer, entire paragraphs with code blocks and everything, um, there's one problem. There's a performance problem. And um, it's good practice to think about this from the start. So this was the MVP implementation. Now let's optimize it. But what even is the performance problem? Let's roll the video to see it. In Chrome DevTools, you can activate the rendering panel. And if you show the rendering panel, you can activate paint flashing. So whenever the browser paints something, it will flash a green um, rectangle here. So you can see I enter a word. And now look at what I'm doing. I'm expanding my output element. And I'll look at what's happening at the output element. You can see it's flashing like crazy. It's painting a lot. Now if I actually expand, pay attention to what is happening on the right side when I press suggest. You can see the browser needs to paint every single, t every single time, the entire thing. Because I'm just rendering the inner HTML, which means there's a lot of flickering. Every single time I throw away everything completely, the browser has to uh, redo everything from scratch. So what is the performance bottleneck? I need to identify the performance bottleneck. And in this case, it is the innocent looking inner HTML. Um, but browsers actually can deal with streaming HTML really well. By using HTML, inner HTML though, I throw away this optimization completely. So that's not something to do. It was fine for the MVP, but for the actual performant application, I don't want to do that. So step six, optimize for performance. And rather than setting the inner HTML in a loop, as I've done before, I now make use of a really, really old browser API, which is document.implementation.createHTML document. That's really one of the oldest browser APIs. But the cool thing is this thing gives me back a document object. And why is this cool? Because with this document object, I can just use the good old document write API. And um, this lets me write um, like the opening string. So here's the list of synonyms, yada, yada, yada. And then I start with my unordered list and the first list item. And um, I just append this to a diff. And from there on, I can stream my incoming responses as they come. So let's have a look at the code. The final trick now is then in the loop where I pro process each chunk almost as before. I just remove the markdown as before, so the dash or the asterisk. And um, every single time I start with a new um, line, I open a new list item, and then just use the document.write API to write this new content into my document. So let's see in the video the difference that this makes. Let's play the video. Pay attention again at what is happening at the output element. I enter a word, press suggest. And now I can see the browser really only paints every single new word that needs to be painted. And actually, not even at word level, it is at the actual um, token level. So see what a difference this makes. This is, of course, a toy example. But you can imagine, once you start hitting real applications that have code blocks, a lot of data, it really, really does make a difference. So a really, really, really old DOM API used for profit in modern AI streaming of, yeah, streaming responses from an AI model. So big difference with small code change, but this is setting you up for success. So let's recap what the learnings were from building apps with built-in AI APIs. First, of course, you need to come up with an idea and create a prompt that works for your use case. So with small models, this means prompt engineering, and maybe even prompt engineering the sh exclamation mark t out of it until it works. <laughs> Second, you need to start with an MVT, MVP implementation. So see, does it actually work? Does it do what it is supposed to do in practice? And then finally, you should optimize the application for actual users, for actual use cases. For my simple app, this, these steps were all linear. But it may well be that if you build something in practice, then you need to come back to the prompt engineering even after building the MVP, for example. So sometimes you roll this out to users, your users start hitting corner cases. And this is where you then 
um, you need some sort of feedback loop so that f users can report issues with your AI model and with your solution. Be sure to sanitize your in and outputs because you don't want to um, yeah, attack yourself. And with that, I hope this presentation was useful. We have an article at developer.chrome.com slash docs slash AI slash built in APIs with a list of all the APIs that you can use today. Give them a shot, please. Let us know, give us feedback. And with that, I want to thank you very, very much for your attention. There's a QR code where you can scan. Um, there's a bunch of links also on this uh, deck. So you can see AI Synonym Finder, the demo app, is linked from chrome.dev. We have the early preview program. Please join it. Please give us feedback, test the APIs. And of course, there's documentation. So guja.gle chrome ai dev preview index has an index of all the APIs that we've um, rolled out so far. So you can test them and play with them. And with that, thank you very much for listening. Mm -hmm.